So, this question says, this is a proposed alternative to the current federal income tax system based on someone's annual income. So, their salary or whatever else they make. So, for the first $100,000 of income, every dollar is taxed at a rate of 10%. So, I'm going to say, I'm going to put my little, wait, before that, we were variables. Sorry. The income, the annual income. Come in. Yeah, I unlocked it. Hi, Scott. So X is the annual income. T of X would be what? You're right. It depends on how we it depends on how we set it up. We're gonna say the amount of taxes paid. So on this one, you don't know what T of X could represent because Michaela brought up a good point. It could have been your income, like how much money you get after you your taxes but down here if you look it says t would specify the income tax that you're going to be paying All right so t is the amount of taxes paid so let's go ahead and draw our kind of number line here so if you got paid nothing you're going to get taxed nothing, nothing. Awesome. all right then we have people who get a hundred thousand dollars in a year and how much are they getting taxed? 10%. Okay. And then we have people for the next 100,000 of income. So how much money are they making? 200,000. So people between 100,000 and 200,000 are getting taxed what? Twenty percent. You were right with the 20. You knew it. All right. And then for the next 100,000, that's 300. How much are they being taxed? 30%. And then anything above that? 40%. So how many pieces will our piecewise function have? four pieces, okay? And these numbers along the bottom are the X values that we're talking about. And these numbers up here are the thing that's happening to X. And so we have that thing happen to X and then it's gonna spit out our Y value, all right? So I'm gonna say T of X equals, and I'm gonna leave space to put four different piecewise functions. Okay, so what do we do for the first piece? We have to figure out what 10% of the income is. So how do I write an equation for that? Yes. Uh, 0.1. 0.1 times x. So this would be 10% times x. And the x is how much money you make, right? Your annual income. And so we only use this if x is between what values? Zero and a hundred thousand. Okay. All right. Now they're saying if you make a hundred and twenty thousand dollars, then your first hundred thousand would have the ten percent tax, but the other twenty thousand would have a twenty percent tax. So you have two different percent taxes based on the amount of money you made. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out 0.1 times 100,000 would be the first part. And then 0.2 would be what part? What do I put in my parentheses? X minus 100,000. Okay. So this is saying for the first 100,000, I'm going to pay 10%. And then this is saying however much above that is going to get the 20%. So if I'm getting paid 120000 then I would do 120000 minus 100000 and only 20000 would get that extra percentage tax. That's what that's saying. 
And this is if... This is if what? If it's between 100,000, but not equal to 100,000, and then 200,000 is the upper bound, and it could equal that. Yeah. Okay. The third part is going to say we've got someone who's making like $250,000. And they're paying 10% for the first 100,000, 20% for the second 100,000, and then for the 50,000 extra, they get, have to pay 30% tax on that part. Okay? So we're going to say they have 10% for the first 100,000. They have 20% for the second 100,000, which if we did in the parentheses, if we did 200,000 minus 100,000, what do we get? A hundred thousand. So that's how we do the math to say that they do 20% for the next hundred thousand. And then we would say plus 30% for X minus 200,000. So they only pay the 30% for anything above 200,000, which is why we put X minus 200,000. We just want to see how much above 200000 they are. So if their annual income is 205000 then they're only paying that extra tax for $5,000, not their whole income, just that $5,000. Okay? And this is if, what values for X do we use here? 200000 to 300000 We're running out of room. These are big numbers. When I was doing this on my other notes, because I always have other notes done, and I look at that, I started putting Ks instead of all the extra zeros. 200K, 100K. All right. And then the very last one is going to be what? So we're going to have 10% for the first 100,000, 20% for the second 100,000, 30% for the third 100,000, plus, and then what do we put? Point 0.4, 40% for anything above 300,000. Okay, and we say if X is greater than 300,000. Okay. There's just, yeah, there's just a lot of numbers here. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean it up a little bit so it's easier to use because that's just a lot of mess right now. So the first one is okay. For the second one, I want to see what 10% of 100,000 is. Anyone know the trick for finding 10% of something? You move the decimal over one place. So instead of 100,000, it would be 10,000 if you move the decimal over one place. So we're going to say 10,000 plus 0.2 times x minus 100,000. Now, technically, we could distribute the 0.2 and get rid of our parentheses. And we would make this equation look a little bit more like y equals mx plus b. The reason I'm not doing that is because when you simplify this completely, you don't really understand what the different parts mean. And when I write it like this, you can see what they mean. So this is talking about the tax from the first 100,000. This is the tax we're figuring out for the second 100,000. I like to leave it like that because I think it makes it easier to tell what you're doing. All right. So if 100,000 
less than x, less than or equal to 200,000. Okay. The next one, we're going to do a tenth, or sorry, 10% of 100,000 plus 20% of the next 100,000. And so that would be 30,000 in taxes. So that's 30,000 in taxes for the first $200,000. And then we would have 30% tax for anything that was above the $200,000. And then for the last one, we can go ahead and say 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. How much would you be paying in taxes for all three of those? 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 60,000. It'd be 60,000. All right, so if we are trying to figure out how much income tax someone with an income of 150000 would pay, then what do we need to find? What do we have to do? Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to plug it into the second one because 150000 is in between 100 and 200. So I'm going to say T of 150000 That's me writing that function notation to say that's what I'm plugging in. And then I'm going to use the second line. So this is saying that for the first 100,000, I'm paying 10%. And then for 150,000 minus 100,000, what would I get right there? 50,000. And then for just 50,000, I would be paying 20%. That's what the equation is saying. So let's go ahead and figure out what that is. Plus 0.2 times 50,000. And what do we get? 20,000. The question doesn't say how much income do they have. It just says how much tax would they pay. So I'm going to say someone with an annual income of 150,000 would pay 20,000 in tax. And I guess I could say in federal income tax. Yes. If you write 20,000 period, that's not a complete sentence. So I should see a capital at the beginning. I should see a period at the end. I should see like words. Yes. So the reason I have you guys write sentences is because later on in math, there's a point where um, the interpretation of your answer is a little bit harder. So some students would say $20,000 is how much money they made. That's what they honestly think because they don't understand how to interpret their answer. So when you guys are writing a full sentence, you're proving to me that you understand what your answer means. Does that make sense? It seems silly, but the, the further on in math we get, the more um, like confusing the questions get. And I want to make sure that you always understand what your number actually means. So that you know that it's dollars and you know it's how much they're paying in tax, not actually how much they're getting paid or something like that. All right, last example 
a salesperson makes $35,000 a year plus their 4% commission on all sales up to and including $500,000. If they exceed $500,000 in sales, then their commission jumps to 6% for all the remaining sales that are over $500,000. The total salary S for a given year is based on their total sales. Okay, so what does X stand for? Okay, so total sales and then here they didn't tell us to use t they told us to use s so s of x would be what their salary total salary okay now this one doesn't start at zero where does this one start 35,000 is the lowest they can get. So they that's their like base salary. All right. And then if they make 500,000 in sales. And actually we're going to say, hold on. The 35,000 should be on the top. That's how much money they're making. That would be an output. That's a Y value. Okay, so you can have zero dollars in sales. That's possible. So the bottom is the number we're plugging in. That's the number of sales they have. The top is part of their total salary. That's the Y coordinate, okay? So you could have zero dollars in sales. That means you're not very good at your job. So 500,000 in sales, what percent commission are they getting between zero and 500,000? 4%. And then, and then it goes beyond. I guess I didn't need that long line there. So anything above that is 6%. So how many pieces are we going to have for our piecewise function? Just two. Okay, so we're going to say the salary. Okay. Now, you get the 35000 regardless. You don't have to sell anything to make that. So we're going to say 35000 you automatically get plus... Now what do I put? The percentage. How do we write 4% as a decimal? 0 .04. 0 .04. So we're going to say 0 .04. Okay. And then what do we do? X. Here, Ashley. This is for you, a present. For coming to school today. Aren't you happy that you came to school to get this present? It's a math worksheet. They do not get it as a present. They have to look at their computer for it. All right, so this is if, what are the x values we can use here? What are the x values we use? Zero, no sales, up to and including $500,000 in sales, okay? All right, so the next part we're gonna say they make their $35,000 salary, and then we're saying that somebody who had more than 500,000 in sales would have already made that 4% off of their first $500,000 of sales. They made that money. And then we're going to say plus 6%, and it's 6% of what? There's more, minus 500,000. So the 6% is only the amount extra that they get for anything above 500,000. So if they sold $510,000 worth, then only 10,000 would get that extra percent of commission, right? So this is if, if what? Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and clean that up a little bit. So 35,000 plus 4% of X if they sold between zero and 500,000. 
I've never really worked a commission job, so I don't even know what job that would be that makes $500,000 in sales. Maybe a car salesman or somebody who sells like uh, expensive appliances. Yeah. They'd have to be like, they'd have to be real good phone sales. Eh. I mean, yeah, computers. Uh, an Apple, an Apple salesman, definitely. Yeah. 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 If you were selling, if you were selling phones, like the more expensive ones, and you were like really good at your job, I could see. Yeah. All right. So now we need to see someone who had $35,000 salary plus 4% and they actually did the 500,000. They would have made 55,000 plus the 6% of anything above 500,000. Now, there are more types of piecewise functions, but since we are in Math 3, I decided to keep it kind of simple and just do this specific situation because this is pretty common. So there are other types that you'll learn about. We're just going to call it good here, okay? We're not going to do anything crazy. Oh, that's my greater than sign that looks like a 7. Okay, so the salary of a salesman who sells 350000 and then we want to find the salary of a salesman who sells 700000 sells twice as much. Let's see how, how much money he makes. All right, so which one do I plug the first salesman into the first one? So he gets 35000 plus 4% of 350,000. And the second guy gets the second one, 55,000 plus 6%. So the second salesman is going to get... 4% for his first 500,000 and then he's going to get 6% for the other 200,000 that he went that was above and beyond. So the first guy makes 49,000. The second guy makes sixty seven thousand. Did it stop? Yeah. No. It's great because in the recording it just is like perfect. So it's like I just screamed no for no reason. It is very low. It makes you feel like you should be making more money, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. So a salesman who makes three hundred fifty thousand dollars in sales has a salary of forty nine. Well, so if you were looking at that, this is actually a good thing. Is um, when you get the job offer that tells you. Hey, your base salary is 35,000, you make 4% commission. You should look at that and be like, "No, nah, man, I'm out." No, thank you. That's not very much money for how hard you're working to sell that much. A salesman who makes 350,000 in sales has a salary of 49,000 while a salesman I should have M A N for the first one. Don't tell your English teacher. 
That's singular, not plural. A salesman. Who Is your hand cramping yet? It's called literacy. We have literacy across all subjects areas. We are integrating your learning to show you that all of life uses math and writing and reading. Yes. Or you could say math is taking over English because yes. now we're even using English with math in it. Yeah. All right. So in the beginning, they give you the piecewise function. So what do you have to do? Yeah, you have to plug in the numbers and then you have to write a complete sentence so that you can interpret what those numbers actually mean. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll try, um, we'll try number, well, let's just go ahead and do number one. All right, X represents the number of lawyers and thousands. Um, what would F of X be? What does f of x stand for? In the United States. Yeah. yeah. So it's interesting because we're plugging in a number of lawyers and then we're getting out a number of lawyers, which is kind of interesting, but yeah. Or it might be that I missed part of the sentence when I was typing this up. We could say, um, hmm. No, this is Yeah, we can we can skip that one for now. I'll see if I can find it in the book again and see what that one. All right, let's do this one instead. Well, the thing is, you guys can plug the numbers in, but I want you to be able to write the sentence, and you can't write a sentence if the original problem doesn't make sense. So we're not going to do that one. I'll have to look back. I'll have to look back and see. Yes, ma'am. Well, yeah, if you plug in, but it doesn't make sense that your X is number of lawyers and that your Y would be your number of lawyers in the United States. Yeah. You get lawyers out. You get lawyers out, but they're specifically lawyers in the United States. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. All right. So let's look at this one. Um, during our particular year, the taxes owed. So this represents the taxes owed. Um, in dollars. Filing separately with an adjusted gross income of X dollars, so X is your income, is given by the piecewise function. Use the function to complete and interpret each of the following. Okay, so if we plug in 40,000, where do we plug it into? The second one. Do you guys see how similar it is to what we were just doing? It's written a little bit backwards. Do you guys see that? Can we kind of interpret this based on what we know from the previous problems we've done? What do you guys think the first line means? If your income is between $0 and $17,900, how much 
what percent do you pay for tax? Um, for the first one? Yeah. For the first one would be 15, yeah. right? Okay, what's the 2685 number? What is that? Yeah, the, it's the amount of money you must have paid if you had all the $17,900 and you paid tax on that. And then how much are you paying for anything above that? 28% for your tax above that. Up until what salary amount? 43250 So you guys see how we can kind of read it based off the other ones? Okay. That's a lot of, yes. Yes. Yes, it is. All right, so we're going to say... T of 40,000, which one are we plugging it into? The second one, so 0 0.28 times 40,000 minus 17,900 plus 2,685. We're plugging it into the second one because 40,000 is in between 17 and 43. Because oh, 40,000. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we're plugging it in the second one. So what answer do you guys get? Eight thousand eight hundred seventy-three. So we're gonna say someone with an income of how much money? Someone with an income of forty thousand would pay how much in tax? Yeah. My last paycheck over fifteen hundred dollars was taxed. Fifteen hundred dollars was taxed out of my last paycheck. That's a lot. That's that's a lot. Well, it wasn't all tax. Some of it was like insurance, but I, I saw my actual paycheck and I saw how much I was getting paid out of it. And I was like, that makes me angry I, and sad. <laughs> I had to go to Dunkin' Donuts to buy a donut in mourning of the salary. I did not actually get paid. <laughs> oh, you guys wish. <laughs> Yeah. All right. And then we have some other scenarios. If you turn the page, you have some other scenarios with piecewise. So our goal is we got about 10 minutes. Your goal is to do six and seven. I think that's our goal. We'll see. We'll see how we do with that. And then I'll let you guys know what the homework is. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. So six and seven.